been, uh, I know, many miracles that have happened. There's <coughs> seeds that have been planted to break poverty and lack, to break it. How many have known the way, the way to get out of poverty and lack is to give? Amen. Okay? Yeah. And I know it because I've done it. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. I know it because I've done it. And so, um, the Lord has His, the way His kingdom works is, is different than the natural kingdom. Right. Amen. So there's been many, many miracles have happened. I know so people that, uh, a lot of people here have got healings in their bodies. Amen, there's one. And the people have got, uh, I know we've had a couple of salvations or so that, you know, people are, or uh, rededications and that, and uh um, yeah, there's a lady back there. She's raised her hand. She's got. There's been emotional healings that, that have happened. Um, people have seen the face of God for the first time. So, so there's been a. Been what? Good. Heard the word of God. Heard the word of God. Yeah. Amen. So so there's people hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God clearer. Amen. And so there's been a lot of good fruit happening already, and there's going to be more today. Amen. So I just want to uh, invite Prophet Phil to come on up. So we, we greatly honor Prophet Phil and uh, the ministry, and we're, uh, we're, this ministry is connected. We're connected in covenant with, with one another. Amen. And... Um, so we are receiving the, the flow of uh, a lot of things that we receive here. So just this young lady here, Katie, just as put, you have a, a dental uh, anointing. A lot of dental miracles happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Share what happened just the other night. So my wisdom tooth was coming in, and it was coming in crooked. It was coming in, but the bottom was facing out this way. And um, so... There was much pain, and I couldn't bite down, I couldn't eat, and uh, I had already been praying, Lord, to redirect my thinking to speak positive things over my body when in pain and things, so I had been declaring that. My tooth is straight, there was no pain, I came, and um, Pastor Dan prayed with me, and, um, and in that moment that we were praying, the Lord was touching my tooth, and I was already here praying, and we were praising God. And in, in that praise and worship, the pain had left my mouth, and it was the first time that day that I had not had any pain. Then when we prayed, we prayed that the Lord would just adjust my tooth, because it, 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 that's the way it was supposed to be, to be straight. And I could feel it in my mouth straightening as we were praying. It was just moving. Mm -hmm. And now I can, it's straight. There's no, it's not crooked. I can bite, I can eat, I can do whatever. It's completely no And so the Lord, the Lord commanded me to, or the Lord, the Lord told me what, showed me what to do. And so I just, I commanded the tooth to shift into position Amen. by the authority that, that he's given. Amen. All right. And so as, as prophet Phil has, flows in dental miracles, and we're in covenant with Prophet Phil, so dental miracles can, can flow down into this ministry. Amen. You have a dental miracle? I did. And the, I didn't think about it at first, and then I was, I was, I tasted something toward back here, like this taste came in my mouth, and I would, something kept telling me, go to the bathroom, go look at it, and I said, oh, no way. <laughs> and then I finally said, okay, I'll go, and look back there, and there's this little tooth at the back of my mouth that was, at, you know, for a while I'd been almost looking like it was rotting out of my mouth and I had a lot of tooth pain and I looked back dark. there and it was white. It was actually whiter than the rest of the teeth. Her husband is not a believer. Uh, the Lord told her to go home and show it to him and say, explain this scientifically, honey. <laughs> It's so great to be in this meeting, and we've just had such a great time already. 
and uh, we so enjoyed the Thursday night, and there was some miracles that happened Thursday night, and Friday night there was many more miracles, it's like it just started increasing, and then uh, Saturday morning we went over uh, with Sister Janet's ministry over there, and we just had a great time with Janet Carter and, and her ministry to the, to the ladies, and we just, the Lord moved in an awesome way there. So we're excited about what God's been doing, and uh, we had a great time this morning, sweet, sweet service of the Lord at 9 o'clock, and uh, the presence of God has come again for this service here, Amen. and so we're expecting some awesome things. How many came expecting? Amen. Amen. Came expecting, you know, it, a lot of people don't understand this, but expectation is actually, uh, it has to be there, it's a prerequisite to receiving from God. You need to expect God to do something. Right. You may not even know what He's going to do, but you expect God to do something. Amen. And He will. Right. That's His way. He will release an anointing. He will do some very unique and awesome things, but you have to expect Him to do that. Right. <coughs> That's very important. Very important. I want to share some things with you. Uh, that there's some there's some very unique things. You know, the last the last service we actually taught, we've been teaching on the face of God, and uh, we've been sharing with you what, some of the things that will cause the face. That's in fact today we're going to talk about what causes us to be able to see His face. The last service we talked about five ways to see His face. So, what are the causes? What causes God's face to appear in our behalf? In other words, what, what will entice the Lord? What will cause the Lord to be so attracted to you that He can't stay away from you? Mm. Good. Amen. How many wants to know? Yeah. Yes. We're going to show you that today. Amen. And we want you to catch this by the Spirit and uh, to take hold of what God wants you to see. And uh, I, I, my, my heart is to help you. I, I think you know that. I think many of you know us by now. Our heart is to help you. Our heart is to be important to you and to bless you and to be a blessing in your life, every place where you need it. Every place where I can spiritually release an anointing and come upon your life and change your life, I want to be involved in that. So I believe that God has something special for you. But we're going to talk about how to cause God's face to appear. How to cause him to be so attracted to you that he cannot stay away from you. You know, there are people that actually repel God's presence. There's people that God doesn't want to be around. There's other people he can't stay away from. That's right. I want to be the person that God cannot do without. Amen. That yeah. He so wants me, that He so <coughs> loves and is attracted to me. Now, He loves everybody, but do you know He doesn't love everybody, love everybody the same? Uh, I've heard God loves everybody the same. That's not true. Yeah. He loves everybody, but He doesn't love everybody the same. And I actually saw this in Scripture one day when I was uh, just reading the Word of God, where He said, you know, He talked about, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And if you keep my, keep my commandments, I will love you. Right. That's an added amount of love. Right. He already loves us. Yeah. I will love you and take up my abode with you. Mm -hmm. So that's already telling us, though He loves us, there, there is a more love. Mm -hmm. Do you know, though, uh, we may, we may, you know, we don't, we don't even love people the same. Mm -hmm. Do you not realize there's some people you love more than you love other people? Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Right. So you don't just love everybody the same. Right. That's right. You don't. And God doesn't either. Though God loves everybody. He doesn't like everybody. Amen. God's not a friend to everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. That's true. Can I, can, let me explain this to you. Oh, we all have family, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in-laws and outlaws. We all have family. <laughs> and we may love them, but not want to go on a vacation with them. Come on now. Hello. And maybe uh, during the holidays, you have that one or two people <coughs> that you see and you can't wait till they leave. Yes. Come on. God feels that way about some people. 
He loves them, but doesn't enjoy their company. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. He loves them, but doesn't want to take a vacation with them. I mean, understands that. They want to hang out, in other words. <laughs> you know, there's some people God wants to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's true. Yeah. And we see levels of relationship with God in the Word of God. Amen. Jesus ministered to a multitude of people, but spent only the time of ministry with them. No more than that. Then he had the 70 he spent a little bit more time with. Yeah. Then he had the 12 he spent even more time with. Mm -hmm. Then he had the 3 he was always around. And then he was yeah. the one person that was hugging on him all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that John, who wrote the book of John, described himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Yeah. 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 What he's saying is Jesus loves me more than all of them. You know why? Because <laughs> he loved Jesus more than all of them. Mm -hmm. It is true, John the Beloved, what do you think he's called John the Beloved? And the one that Jesus loved the most. Mm -hmm. Come on. Why? Because he was loving on Jesus the most. Right. Hanging out with Jesus, hugging on him all the time, drawing near. He's, you know what he said in his word? Draw nigh to me, then I'll draw nigh to you. He didn't say, I want to draw nigh to you so you can draw nigh to me. No, he said, you draw nigh and I'll draw nigh. You know why? He's already paid the price. He already did the first move. Right. That's true. Right. He went to the cross. What else do you want him to do? Come right. on. That's right. Come on. He even came to the earth and died for you. Mm -hmm. Rose again for you. And paid the total price for you. And seated at the right hand of the Father for you. So Amen. what he's saying is, I've done all that I'm going to do. Now you make a move. Amen. And then I'll, I'll make a move. Hallelujah. In other words, if you've ever played uh, tennis before, somebody will knock the ball in your side of the court. Now, once they knock the ball in your side of the court, they don't have, have anything else to do till you knock it back. Right. 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 Come on, somebody. That's right. God's already knocked the ball in our side of the court. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's it. Come on. Waiting on us to, to reciprocate, to knock it back, to do something. Amen. Yeah. So God won't do any more until we do something. Right. Somebody's going to catch it. Good. So how to cause the face of the Lord to shine. Now before I do, before I get too deep in it and forget something, we have a, a very special thing. I call it our email newsletters that we also send with these email newsletters. We send videos. We send what we call the prophet's corner. That I'm talking about prophecy. Sometimes I talk about healing and miracles. Sometimes I talk about the voice of God. And all of these are on video that's sent out by email. And so how many of you are getting some of these? We have some people getting them. And you know, I've had people healed who watched one of those videos when I did something on healing and prayed over people. I actually had some word of knowledge I was releasing on the video. And we had a lady that was in chronic pain all of her life was totally healed. Amen. No more pain. At the end, of, when I prayed at the end of that teaching, and so this is a tremendous, this is all free to you. We pay for it, but it's free to you. And all you need to do is fill out one of these cards and put your email address on it. If you're not getting these but you would like to, please lift your hand and we'll make sure that you get one of these cards. And if I can get an usher, thank you, brother. Pass one out to everybody. Please print your email address legibly at the bottom. And this is for free to you. We don't charge you anything. We, you know, and I pay for the people, our workers, to help me put the videos together, to help me send the bit, you know, all of these emails out, and it takes time to do all of that, which time is money when you're paying your workers. And I, the Lord told me, He said, I want you to take care of this at no cost to the people. So there's no cost to you. It's free to you. It cost us, but it won't cost you. Amen. But to me, it's a labor of love, and the Lord, since the Lord told me to do it, I'll always be blessed by doing it. So we send these out. Uh, there are times we'll send them out every week and sometimes every other week. So wait for them, watch for them. It'll come out as Ecclesia Ministries is how it'll come out, which is our ministry, Ecclesia Ministries. So when you get it, you know, uh, don't spam it when you get it. That's, a, that's us. <laughs> Prophet Phil is actually Ecclesia Ministries too. Okay? <laughs> ministries. Amen. And check your spam too in case it automatically spams it. Check it. Okay? In case you're not getting them, it could be that it's shifting it over. So... Yeah, I mean, he knows how to double check all that and safeguard all that. So, great, great. Well, I want to tell you before I get into the message and get caught up, we love you and appreciate you so much. And Pastor Dan and Pastor Patricia are some of my favorite people in the world. I love you. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, we love them 
so much. They're just, they're just friends and family. And I'm so glad they adopted me because I adopted them too. Hallelujah. And we so love, you know, Shekinah glory is so important to us. And all of you. And in the days to come, we're looking forward to continuing to minister and come and see you. And I would like to have us come back and minister again. And we love coming here and, and being with you. And Ryan can tell you this I love. This is one of my favorite places. And because of you guys. Each and every one of you. You guys are special. We love you. And thank you for partnering with us, those who became monthly partners with us. Thank you for doing that. If you want to become a monthly partner later, you can see Ryan. He has a little envelope that you can uh, you can take that envelope. You can write some things in. You can also see him about uh, releasing a monthly amount, even by credit card or debit card. If you'd like to be a monthly partner with us, we would certainly, certainly love to have you as part of our family and to assist us. And uh, the amount, whether it's $20 or it's $10 whether it's $50 or $100 a month, whatever you can do, really helps. You, you think about this. If you had a thousand people who sent you $10 each, how much would that be? Or yeah. well, if you had a thousand people that said, well, you know, I don't have $100, so I'm not going to send anything. You see the difference? Yeah. So it's important that everybody does something. If you can do 10 a month, if you can do 20, if you can do 50, you can do 100, whatever you can do, Amen. Uh, do that. And, yeah. and what happens is every month when we, and, I, and I, I go to the post office myself, I love to go. When I'm there, I want to go check and see who's my supporter this month. I, I take and I open those envelopes and I pray over you. I, when, I, when I see your name and those that I remember, I go, oh Lord, this is a wonderful... Yeah, that person from Kansas City area. Oh, Lord, bless him. And I pray blessing over you. And I ask the Lord to release the prophet's reward. I also ask the Lord to take a portion of our mantle and anointing and transfer it to you. Amen. Amen. So you've you, you got to understand that there's going to be a financial breakthrough, but there's going to be a spiritual breakthrough. Amen. And just like, you know, both, uh, both of the pastors from both of the fellowships here, both the Shekinah Glory and, and Eagle Heart will both tell you there has been an increase of anointings on their lives since they connected with us. And because it's a principle, I feel like I'm increased too by connecting to them. Amen. 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 So as we connect, and I sow into their ministries too, and before I leave, uh, I have to leave in the morning, but before I do, I'm going to see these pastors, both of them, from both fellowships that's hosting me, and there will be checks put in their hands Amen. from our ministry. I'm going to sow into them. Amen. You say, well, Brother Phil, you don't have to. No, I don't have to. I want to. That's right. And I know the principle Come on. that when you sow into ministries that are anointed, mm -hmm. that anointing comes on you. Come on. That's and right. you know what? I'm kind of a pig when it comes to the anointing. I'm a real hog. <laughs> Man, I'm going to belly up to the top and I'm going to suck it all down. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 That's me. I can't get enough. I don't know about you. You said, Brother Phil, you're so anointed, but you don't know where I got it. I got it by these principles. Amen. I'm drawing into ministries, sowing into ministries, connecting to ministries, loving ministries. Right. That's how I got it. Amen. Amen. The laws of impartation. Right? Amen. Who you partner with, you get a part of their ministry. Right. What you sow into, you tap into spiritually. I'm tapping in. Amen. I said, I'm tapping in. And they know when I'm here, I do that. Yeah. Why? Because I love them, number one. Love compels. Compassion compels. But also, I understand principles. That's right. And I had an apostle that's now with the Lord. He said, Phil, activate the principles, and you'll always have miracles. Right. He said, the miracles of God produce, I mean, the principles of God produce the miracles of God. Activate the principles and you will receive miracles. Amen. He Amen. said you can do that every day of your life. Right. Yes. And the Bible's full of what? Principles. Yes. Bible principles. There's, there's a principle. Seed time and harvest. Here's a principle. Who you sow into, you tap into. Mm -hmm. What you partner with, you get a part of. That's right. In other words, you, it, it, we, it's like we're siphoning off each other's anointing. Mm -hmm. And God, God blesses it. He's trying to say, do it. Draw some of that. Right. You can have some of that over there. You can have some of this here. You can have some of this. It's smorgasbord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So what, if you think I have a lot, it's because I, I know how to get a lot. That's right. Come on. Where do you think I got it? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Where do you think you're going to get it? Amen. 
I get it from prayer and fasting. There's some things you can get from prayer and fasting, but prayer and fasting many times will make you sensitive enough yeah. and aware of the Spirit enough to yes. activate the principles that will produce the miracles. That's right. yeah. That see, fasting and prayer for me did not give me the anointing. Yes. Right. Fasting and prayer positioned me and helped me to understand the revelation Amen. of who to connect to and what to do in order to get the anointing. Right. Amen. Let me tell you what happens in fasting and prayer. You clean out the debris in the spirit realm. Yeah. In fasting and prayer, you make a connection with God so God can reveal to you how to receive things from Him. You get rid of the ignorance. You get rid of the, of the cobwebs in the spirit. Yes. So you can receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You know what God does? God takes all of His mantles and gives it to His fivefold ministry. Yeah. His fivefold ministry in turn will give it to the people as yes. the people learn how to receive them. Amen. It's my job and the job of the fivefold to teach you how to get it. Amen. Then you position yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. Holy Ghost positioning. I'm doing a little teaching right now, but praise God. But it goes against the natural mind. The, the natural mind is enmity against God. Romans chapter 8. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The natural mind doesn't understand the things of the Spirit. You cannot understand the, thing, the things of the Spirit with your natural head. Right. You've got to understand it with your spiritual mind. Come on. That means the, the, the mind of your heart, the mind of your spirit. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Let this mind be in you. He's talking about the mind of Christ, right. the spiritual mind. That's right. There's a difference between a natural mind and a spiritual mind. Right. And your natural mind will never be a spiritual mind. Right, right, right. Come on. The natural mind was meant for you to operate in the natural. The spiritual mind was meant for you to operate in the spirit. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Come on. Hallelujah. Preach it. Well said. I do have a series on that. Mm -hmm. He has a book, Revelations. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's, yeah, and there's, yeah, we, we have materials on the inner mind. We have a... Uh, materials on so much stuff, and and uh, you can get a hold of those. And I think uh, I think David here beating had, had said he had some of my copies on the uh, on the mind of the inner mind. Mm -hmm. And we I don't have, know if they're up here some. or where they're at. Are they over here? We mm -hmm. have some. You have some of them over here. I think you guys mind. might have some of them, and you can get a hold of them. And it gives all the scripture. Because if you know me by now, you know I'm going to teach the word. I'm not oh, yes. just going to give you an opinion. Opinions don't change you, but the Word changes you. I mean, no, it's not the opinion that changes you, it's the Word that changes you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. In the inner mind. Right. Glory to God. In the God. Awesome. The secrets of the supernatural. Mm -hmm. oh, Powerful last stuff. Time came. Powerful stuff. And then we got here, uh, Miracle Bread Breaking Service mm -hmm. on this one. Yes. Um, now, there's some stuff over there you can take advantage of. Yeah, we've got that. we've got some more. Here's the Open Heaven series by Phil Rich. Mm -hmm. And then he's got another one here, Mind Service. Mind service. That's the one right there. Yeah. That's the one right. we were talking about. Hallelujah. But that's the last time he came and he uh, preached that. Yeah, if you if you want to get a hold of a great series, do the one on the mind of Christ, the spiritual mind. You'll begin to understand the difference and why we have to. We actually get this. We renew our spiritual mind. Mm -hmm. yes. And we're transformed by renewing the spiritual books are really good. We got thirty-seven mm -hmm. on uh, Amazon. You go on Amazon, you'll find us thirty-seven books there. And uh, my sister here says four. she has thirty-four oh, of them on it. So she just has a few left to, to go to before she has my whole series so far. And we've got about that many yet to come out. I'm working on several now, just trying to hurry up and get them done on how to heal the sick. We've got one on how to heal the sick and how to move in miracles. That's one of our books that's coming out. Uh, the Revelation of Peace, what Amen. peace really is. We've got a whole book on the Revelation of Peace and Revelation of Thanksgiving. And we've got several books that haven't yet hit the shelves, but we're going to work on that. How many is in love with Jesus right now? Hallelujah. I want, to, I want to share something with you as we get into the Word together about how to cause God's face to appear. I want to take you to Leviticus chapter 9, beginning with verse 6. We're going to read through, I mean, with verse 4 through 6. Revelation 9, beginning with verse 4, going through verse 6. So Leviticus, say Leviticus. Leviticus. Here it is. Okay, now I'm going to share something as we get into this. Also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord, and a meat offering mingled with oil for today. Look at this. For today the Lord will appear unto you. Mm. 
Now what he was saying is, get your offering ready because as you give it, it will cause God to appear. Amen. Are you catching this? Yes. Now I'm, I'm going to be sharing other verses that say the same thing. Because you know me, I'm going to build an argument. Right. When I say an argument, not to, not to be argumentative, but to show you. Right. A case. Let's say I'm going to build the case. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to build a case in the Spirit with the Word of God and show you why what, what I'm talking about is true and why it's a principle that if you'll activate the principle, you will cause God's face to appear to you. Amen. And what he said here is get your offerings ready because then, then the Lord will appear unto you. He will appear unto you. And uh, we're just going down through verse 6 on this. Verse 5. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Was that verse 5? Where is it? Verse 5. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. Verse 6 tells it very plain. Mm -hmm. The Lord's commanded you to bring all these different offerings mm -hmm. and that you should do it. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. In other words, he said once you do it, the glory of the Lord will appear. In other words, God's going to be so attracted to your offering, to your lack of selfishness, right. for your love for Him Proving your love. And I've heard someone say this. You may be able, I want you to, you may be able to give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. That's right. That's right. Did you hear what I just said? That's good. No. You may be able to give without loving, but you cannot love without yes. giving. That's good. Come John 3.16. For God so loved that He said, Love you folks. No. For God so loved that He gave. gave. Compassion compels. Compassion is love in action. If you really love, you'll do something. That's it. That's it. Now can you imagine me saying to my sweetheart, years ago, we've been, we've been married 34 years, let's say before we were married, I come and say, oh baby, I love you so much, but you know, I know you're not into money, honey, and you're not marrying me for the money. You're married because you love me. So don't, you know, forget, forget me getting you a house. Forget me get, you know, paying you the bills and buying you food and, and getting you a ring. And How many of you ladies can already go, something's going south? <laughs> you know what she would say? You prove by what you're saying you do not love me. And I will not marry you. That's what she would have said to me. Even though I said, I love you, baby. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> your praise means nothing if you're, there's not a sacrifice of your life given to God. Right. The greatest praise is you when you have given yourself to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you know the Word of God said we've been created for praise? We, it never said you've been cr created to praise. Study the Word. It said you've been created for it. For it means that's your purpose. For it means that you're the, you're the praise. Amen. Not just the way you praise, but you are the praise. Yes. Right. Right. You know what God really wants? You! Amen. Do you know why offerings mean something to God? Because He knows it means something to you. Amen. That's right. I love to bless my wife. And show and I just do extra things for her. She said, Oh honey, I love you so much. But she said she says, You're always doing stuff for me. Why are you always doing stuff for me? Because I love you so much. I just can't stop it. How many understand what I'm saying? You know? And I'll tell her, honey, just go get a dress, go get go get some clothes, whatever. She doesn't buy a lot of stuff like that. And I'll say, Oh honey, go. Well, how much I spend? I don't care. Go. Get your, you know, you do you know what we got in the account? Go ahead, whatever you need. You know what we got in the account? Just, just don't go open, but whatever's there, you spend what's there. Go for it. That's how I treat my wife. Why? Why? Why are you so good to her? Because I love her so much. That's right. <laughs> See how love does. Yes. Now, what about loving God? 
I said, what about loving God? That's right. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I love you. You know, you know what? Words are cheap. Right. That's right. Words are real cheap. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. But offerings cost you something. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's right. God's looking for proof to the pudding. Right. Amen. 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 When you got the proof to the pudding, guess what? He's going to say, we can go somewhere with this. Yeah. Yeah. That's Amen. right. Come on. Amen. Amen. And we're going to prove to you in a moment what we're talking about. Go to Psalms 102 and verse 16. I want you to see this. For those of you that's coming in a little bit later, we're talking about how to cause the face of God to shine upon you, how to cause God's face to appear. The Lord is looking for hearts that are willing to love Him so much that they'll, they'll give whatever He wants, whatever they just, just want to bless God. And you know how you bless God? You bless God's people. You bless His ministry. You bless others around you. Mm -hmm. Did you know after a mighty outpouring in the book of Acts, do you know what the people did? They started selling extra land that they had and extra things they had and brought it to the house of God and just laid it at the apostles' feet and said, Apostle, anybody that you know that needs this in, right. the, in the body, just take care of them. That's right. Here's the money. Come on. Yes. Yeah. And nobody orchestrated it. Right. But the Holy Spirit That's and right. the hearts of the people were greatly in love with God. That's right. Yeah. I can tell you two things that will cause a revival and outpouring like you. I mean signs, wonders, and miracles. Be a person who prays and, and will fast and be very generous in your giving yes. and there will be a mighty outpouring of God that will not stop. Right, right. Until you stop it. Good, yeah. I see it in the scripture. Acts chapter 10. We're going to show you another place in 2 Chronicles 7 a little bit. But when people start fasting and praying and being very generous in their giving, when I say generous in their giving, some people say, well, you know, I don't have a whole lot to give. You know, generosity is not about having a whole lot to give. I heard T.D. Jakes explain it this way. He said, you have somebody that's a hobo out on the streets. And this apple truck comes along and hits a bump and a big juicy apple bounces out on the grass right in front of the hobo. He goes over and picks up that apple, it's about this big, it's huge, and it, and it, and it didn't even bruise because it hit the grass, you know, the soft spot. He's going, woo, look at that. And then he, he looks at it, but he immediately looks over at his buddy yeah. and says, you want half? Mm, that's right, yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> said, that's generosity. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah, Did yeah. he have a lot to give? No. no. No, but was he generous? Yeah. That's the point. God's looking for generosity. Yeah. That's right. I've also had people walk up in my in my, you know, the offering time, and, and, and put put a 20 in and say, this is all I have to give. And I'm going, oh, Lord, bless them for their sacrifice. Then after the service at Denny's, they were ordering up steak dinners for their whole family. Mm. Wow. I thought, you just lied to the Holy Ghost. Right. Wow. Not good. Now, if you're the kind of person that says, I have all the gifts, saying, this is all I budgeted for God. Here's God's little portion. Here's my portion. Here's God's little portion. Here's my portion. You reverse that and watch what God will do for you. Right. And you'll wind up more than this portion, I guarantee you. Right. That's right. Plus the favor of God in your life. Amen. You cannot outgive God. That's right. How many wants God to be so attracted to you he can't stay away? Yes. He wants to hug you. And yes, 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 the Bible says the kisses of His mouth. He's going to come and kiss all over you. He's going to hug yes. you. He's going to want you. That's right. He's going to can't stay away from you. <laughs> come on, I'm talking yes. spiritual, yes. but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen? Amen? How many's ever had God hug you? I've had God yeah. hug yeah. Yeah. and hug yeah. me. Yeah. 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 You have never had a hug. You've had a hug from God. Amen. <laughs> No hug like it. That's right. Amen. Several years ago, my wife, she, she started crying. She said, honey, why can't you hug me and hold me in a way that just heals everything? I said, because I'm not God. Yeah. Right. I hug her all the time. <clears throat> I said, baby, what you're really asking for is for God to hug you. Because right. only He can hug you yes. in such a way. Yes. You feel it all the way through. That's right. And True. everything is healed by it. Amen. Amen. The woman at the well was looking for men to fulfill her. Right. And men, listen, ladies, there's ne there will never be a man outside of Jesus that will ever be able to make you feel fulfilled on the inside. That's right. That's good. Men, there will never be a woman that can do that. That's right. 
And if you try to do it that way, there will be one after another, after another, after another, after another. Right. With heartbreak and disappointment and destruction to your life. That's right. Mm -hmm. You play that game, you're going to pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a payday. Wages of sin is what? It's death. And there's a payday to it, right? How many understands that? Now look at this. Here, I want you to see this. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, Zion be in the church. So it, it, this is how it works. When you start getting built up in the Word enough, That's right. when you get built up by attending the house of God, coming to meetings like this, getting the revelation of the Word, can't get enough, and you start feeding enough on the Word right. and on the presence of God and the fullness of God, and you get built up, look, what does it say? He, he shall, shall appear in His glory. Hallelujah. So what's God looking for? He's looking for you to get built up That's right. in His Word. Yeah. Be full of His Word. Right. Pressing into His Word. Yeah. Yes, you need to read it on your own. You need to do that. But you, why, do you, why do you think there's fivefold teachers? Why do you think there's fivefold ministry? Right. Because we're meant to give you something you cannot get on your own. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. There you go. I've had people come and say, Brother Phil, I've read those very passages. I never saw that. I never experienced that. I didn't. I, 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 I never had that revelation on it. But when you taught it, the Word came alive like I've never seen it before. I said, that's why we need a five-fold ministry. Right. Yes. Right. You can read it on your own, but you can't get everything on your own. Right. Why do you think Jesus established a five-fold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4? Mm -hmm. To edify the body, to build the body up. Amen. In order to build the body up, for what purpose? So He shall appear in His glory before yes. you. Face-to-face right. -face encounters with God. Amen. 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 Let me begin to see something right now. Yeah. How many's catching it right now? Yes. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit's trying to unveil it to us. Yes. What's going to cause God's face to shine upon you? What's going to cause His face to appear to you? It's huge. Glory to God. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 5, and we'll read through verse 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, I mean, sorry, chapter 1, beginning with verse 5. And we're almost done, but I just, I've got to share it with you. I've got to complete the thought that the Lord's given. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezeel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. The brazen altar. This is talking about a place where you're going to offer a sacrifice to God. Go a little bit further. Verse 6. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and he offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Now I want to show you something. A king was only uh, obligated... To give one bullock. A bullock meaning a steer. Okay, those who have been raised on farms and, and you've been horticulture and all of that, you understand what I'm talking about. You've been around animals, right? How many have been around animals and farms before? So you know what the difference between a bull and a steer. <laughs> Amen? A heifer and a cow. How many knows the difference between all of those? And a little calf. Right? How many knows the difference? Okay. So, the steer, he, he was supposed to get a full-grown steer, probably about 2,000 pounds or whatever, and that was to be given to the Lord. A king was supposed to give a steer. How many steers was he supposed to give to God at one time? One. How many did he give? A thousand. I hope you're seeing this. In other words, God's looking for someone who goes beyond what you have to give. See, a lot of people want to go to the least amount they can get away with. Mm -hmm. 
But what you don't know, there's no such thing as discount giving with God. If you operate discount giving with God, you will get discount results with God. In other words, you give little, you get little. You give much, you get much. And that is actually a verse of Scripture in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 beginning with verse 5. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. In other words, the Lord said, if you sow little, you get little. You give little, you get little. So listen, there's no such thing as discount giving with God. Amen. That's right. Go ahead and do it, and you'll get discounted. Amen. See, when you go in above and beyond, you're putting God at the front of the line in your life, and God will put you at the front of the line in His life. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard one man say, the man whose hand is open at the time of an offering is the hand that will be open at the time of the receiving. The person whose hand is closed at the time of an offering, that hand will still be closed when God's starting to pour out blessings. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, understand, in other words, keep your hand where you're giving, where you're releasing is something to God all the time. And guess what will happen? You're going to be receiving something from God all the time. Amen. Amen. All of life is seed time and harvest. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that right? How many of you, you, you keep treating folks bad? What's going to happen to you? You're going to be treated bad. Preach it. Preach it. Now, you keep smiling at folks. Some people may not smile back at you, and some people may not understand what you're doing and think you're on drugs or something. <laughs> just, just keep smiling at somebody, and eventually, you're going to notice that everywhere you go, people are smiling at you. That's right. Yeah. That's <laughs> just don't expect to see immediate results. See, a lot of times we want to smile one time and expect a thousand people to smile back. Right. It, 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 it might take a while. Right. <laughs> because it's seed time and harvest. You plant a seed. How many knows when you plant a seed there's not an immediate harvest? Right. right. You plant a seed and then four months later you see something. Come on, somebody. That's right. Come on. We have to understand that with God. Yeah. Seed, time, yeah. and harvest. That's right. And that's, that's actually the law of Genesis in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. As long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Ooh, how many learned something right now? Yes. Yes. And Solomon went thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation. He offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Look what happened in verse 7 after he offers a thousand burnt offerings. Look at verse 7. The very next verse, first, Second Chronicles chapter one, verse seven. Look at this. In that night, what night? The, the night. same night that earlier the day he gave a thousand burnt offerings to the Lord. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, "Ask what I shall give thee." Mm -hmm. Now, how many would like to have the Lord appear tonight in your bedroom, next to your bed, standing before you, you can see Him plainly into His eyes of love, and say to you, child, whatever you ask of me, I will do it! Amen. That's what happened to Solomon. Right. And I want to tell you something interesting. That never happened before he gave the thousand bullocks. Right. Study, study your scripture. Never happened before. Well, I think that was just coincidental. Yeah, you believe that everything is a coincidence with God? Right. <laughs> that God just uh, accidentally blesses somebody once in a while? Are you kidding? He doesn't do anything on accident. That's right. He does everything on purpose and because of a purpose. And I want you to understand, He's waiting for you to make a move, then He'll make several moves Woo! in your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he always does way more than we do. Yeah. Woo! I mean, picking up something yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Now go to Second Chronicles chapter seven, and I'm going to begin with verse one and take you through verse sixteen. I'm going to give you sixteen verses of Revelation. How many is ready for sixteen yeah. verses of Revelation Amen. that'll change your life? Amen. And this this passage that I'm going to take you to, the next sixteen verses of this 
2 Chronicles chapter 7, will show you how revival will come, how outpourings will come, how finances will come, how answers to prayer will come, how intimacy face to face with God will come, how God will promise that He'll answer every prayer, that He'll listen to everything you say, that He'll look and see every need you have and fulfill it. it those promises are in the first 16 verses. Amen. And I'm going to show you how this works. How many is ready to be wowed by the Holy Ghost Yay. and the Word of God? Amen. I'm, I'm going to show you the I'm a teacher of the Word. Get ready to be, be wowed by God in His Word. Double portion. Hallelujah. Amen. Now look at this. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, say praying, praying. the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the, and the what? Sacrifices. The burnt offering and the what? Sacrifices. sacrifices. You know, it's scriptural not only to give offerings, but to give sacrifices. sacrifices. Can I give you a revelation before we go any further? In my life, when I give offerings, the anointing in my life increases. When I give offerings to anointed ministry, the anointing increases. When I give sacrifices... The glory increases. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's a difference. There's a difference between offering and sacrifice. Right. A sacrifice is not a sacrifice till it's a sacrifice. Amen. Right. That's so true. I said a sacrifice is not a sacrifice till it's a sacrifice, and there's three sacrifices in the new covenant in the New Testament. Yeah. The first sacrifice is in Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your body a living sacrifice. That's right. So the first sacrifice God requires, and He does require sacrifices today right. under the new covenant, mm -hmm. is He wants you. He wants right. you. And He wants you 100% to be a sacrificial gift to Him. Amen. To do whatever He wants. Yes. Yes. That you no longer live to yourself, but you live unto God. Amen. The, you know what the Word of God says? You've been bought with a price. Yep. Yes. You are not your own. Therefore, glorify God in your in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God. Right, right. Good. Come good. on, we're, we're, we're quoting scripture to you right now. Yeah, you, we don't belong to us. That's right. We belong to Him. Amen. He bought us yes. with His blood. Yes. So when you say, "Jesus, come into my heart," you're actually saying, "I do now. I belong to you." Mm -hmm. <laughs> In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, it said, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And the word joined there means married. Yeah. Yes. Amen. So when you get saved, you're actually <clears throat> getting hitched, betrothed Amen. to the lover of your heart. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Right. Come on. And you just said, I do. Yes. <laughs> You said, I do to Jesus when you got saved. Amen. Now, when you said, I do, you also said, I belong to you. I said, you said, I do, and I belong to you. You don't belong to yourself. You, this, you can't even make decisions for your own life anymore without consulting Him because you don't own yourself. And if you want to take yourself back, go ahead and reverse every good thing God has for you. Mm. Go ahead and curse yourself. Mm. Not me. No. I give myself without reservation. I belong to Him 100%. And you know, I, I keep telling Him that because I want to recommit. And I want my mind to know. And I want the devil to know. And I want everybody to know. I belong without reservation 100% to my Jesus. And whatever He wants, He gets it. He does. Yeah. He wants me in Russia. I'm going to be there. He, he wants me in Nicaragua. I'm going to be there. He wants me in Romania. I'm going to be there. Amen. He wants me here in Kansas City. I'm going to be here. Hallelujah. He wants me to empty my pockets. They're emptied. Empty. Yes. And he's asked us many times, empty your pockets. In fact, he doesn't ask me anymore. He commands me. Because <laughs> I don't belong to him. I'm his, I've said it, Lord. I'm yours to command. Don't say that unless you believe it. Because He will command you. He does me. But if you obey Him, guess what comes with it? 
the biggest blessing, ask whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Ask whatever you want, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. he, can I just say this? He doesn't really say that to everybody. Right. That's right. Check it out in the Word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Woo, this is good stuff. I said, this is good stuff. Amen. Now when Solomon made it into praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Notice when the glory came, not just from offerings, but offerings and. And you know what the glory is? He is the glory and the lifter of our head. The glory is God. Amen. Study the kabod of God. That's what the word glory is. The kabod or kabod of God. It means the weightiest revelation of God Himself. In other words, the glory. He is the glory. And in Psalms He said He is the glory and the lifter of our head. So you'll say, what is the glory? It's not what is the glory, who is the glory? Whenever the glory fills a room, you know He's here. Amen? Isn't that awesome? In other words, He said, when you begin to give sacrifices, I show up. How many needs God to show up? Yes. Amen. I think you're catching it now. Amen. Let's go to the verse 2 now. Hallelujah. And the priest could not even enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. In other words, it was very tangible, right? Mm -hmm. Very tangible. If they tried to come in, they fell out in the Spirit. Go to verse 3. Really cool. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 4. And the king and all the people offered what? Sacrifice. I thought they already did that. Look at this. Now, what's happening is there's a perpetual doing it. And, 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 and you're going to see it throughout this whole chapter because they did it for seven days. They had seven days of heavy duty giving. Seven days. I said seven days. Yeah. So this once in a while I'll do something or once a year or I, I did my duty for the, 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 the millennium or whatever. You know, that's over. We, we live a, a life of obedience to God. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. The king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Now they, they started doing it and they're going to perpetuate it, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of the Lord. Verse 6. And the priests waited in, on their office and the Levites also with the instruments of music of the Lord which, which David the king had made to praise the Lord because his mercy endureth forever. And, and when David praised by their ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them and all Israel stood. Verse 7. Moreover Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the, of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat because it was so much. Mm. They gave so much they had to move to the outer court and to a large open space to handle all the giving. Yeah. 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 So I'm looking for the day with this ministry here, Shekinah Glory, that there just won't be big enough containers yeah. to handle all the offerings people are bringing to the church. That's right. You'll have to wind up with big wheelbarrows and put your dump truck outside or something. Hallelujah. Don't think it can't happen. Right. I said it can happen. You have to get those big fit to buy, you know, gallon barrels, you know, big drums and just get it. That's it. Just keep it. Just keep it on the Lord, and God will turn around and heap it on you. Yeah. You cannot outgive the Creator of wealth. That's right. How can you outdo someone who creates silver and gold? Yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Verse eight. Uh, also at the same time Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him remember seven days I told you a very great congregation from the entering end of Hamath into the river Egypt verse 9 I'll just keep seeing this in the eighth day the day of new beginnings they made a solemn assembly for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days mm -hmm. and the feast seven days look at verse 10 now. awesome stuff and on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, 
he sent the people away into their tents glad and merry. After all that yes. giving, they're glad and merry. Yes. You know why? Because they kept receiving the glory of God Amen. in their lives. Merry in their heart for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. Go to verse 11. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously affected. <coughs> verse 12. And the Lord, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. After seven days of intense, heavy, heavy, heavy sacrificial giving. And the Lord appeared to Solomon. Hmm. We've Amen. seen that before, haven't we? Amen. It's kind of like every time I start becoming sacrificial in my giving, the Lord will show up Amen. and appear to me. That's right. He's always with me, but how many is ready for Him to appear to you? Amen. Appear means you can see Him. Amen. Appear means you see Him. Amen. Appear means you see Him. Amen. Appear means you encounter Him. Amen. That's different than indwelling presence. Yeah, that's right. It's called Shekinah glory. Amen. Shekinah glory. That's right. Amen. It's the very, the very name of this church. Come on, somebody. Yes. I think the Holy Ghost didn't have a whole lot to do with it. Right. It has me come in here and preach Shekinah to you. Hallelujah. I'll show you where this is coming from. See, God wants to appear here in this ministry to you. Amen. And how to have His face. That's right. In other words, how to be how to be this group called Shekinah Glory, Fire Ministries. How to be the church that's Shekinah Glory, who has encounters with God face to face on a regular basis. That's right. See, I'm looking for the whole community to go, you know, when I go to that church, I see God. Every time I go in there, I see the face of Jesus. Never saw that in any church in the whole community. You'll hear people say that. When I go there, I encounter God. When I go there, I see the face of God. How many is ready for the whole community to start saying that? We can actually set that up for folks. Did you know that? Yeah. We and we're going to, aren't we? Yes. Come on, Shekinah yes. Glory. We're going to set the people up for it. Yeah. Good. That they're going to encounter, encounter God face to face here. Amen. Now go to verse 13. <laughs> if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. He's talking about because the, pe the people in a nation have rebelled. And judgment comes on a nation because the nations rebel. You got to understand the children of Israel who were in Egypt, God hid them in the land of Goshen. Yes. But it didn't stop what came on the other people. There's stuff coming on the earth. If you if you'll dedicate and consecrate to God, it won't come unto you. Right. Right. You'll, you'll be hidden in a place of refuge for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's right. The Goshen, the land of Goshen. So he said, if I shut up heaven, there'll be no rain. If I command the locusts to devour the land because of the nation rebelling against God, not us. Hmm. Now God's going to take care of us no matter what happens in the land. You've got to yes. understand that. If I send pestilence among the people, now go to verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. See, we preached on prayer but haven't preached on seeking His face. This ministry preaches seek His face. You, listen, you're not going to have revival and outpouring and change nations so people seek the face of God. Yeah. Right. 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 Pray and in prayer. Listen, prayer is a prelude, prelude to seeking His face, but prayer doesn't mean you're seeking His face. Right. Mm. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You got to focus on His face to see His face. You remember last night? Come on, yes. those that were here in the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, it was, the revelation was there. Yes. Hallelujah. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You know what the word wicked means? Twisted. Twisted, yeah. twisted means that you're, you're thinking the way the world's thinking, which is twisted. Yes. Living the way the world's living. Here doesn't mean 
necessary. It can mean that, but the word wicked really means twisted. Mm -hmm. That's what it really means. Yeah. And so you could have twisted thinking and not be smoking and drinking and chewing and running around with those. Right. You, you can have yeah. twisted thinking yeah. and be in church all the time. Right. Yeah. So you're still wicked ways. Right. Yeah. Woo. In other words, if you think that God is the culprit who's causing the evil in the earth, that's a wicked way. That's right. twisted. Yeah. That's twisted. That's right. If you think that God is the cause of your sickness and disease, that's, that's wicked. That's very yeah. If you think God is the reason you don't have any finance, that's wicked. Yep. Yeah. If you think God is your enemy and not your ally, that's wicked. So we got to turn from our wicked ways of thinking. That's right. Come on. How are you going to do that if you don't know the truth? That's why you need the fivefold to be taught the truth, right? Turn from the wicked ways of thinking. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now let's go to the... I, I, I want to give you verses before and after. Go on to verse 15. I want to show you this after that. Now... Now I want to show you something about verse 14. Verse 14 cannot stand alone. It needs the 13 verses before it. How many know something about Bible study? And having things in context. That means you, that, that you, you have to have it within the text. If you take anything out of the text, in other words, take look at the word context and take text out of it. Take your text out of that. Uh, what do you yeah. wind up with? Uh, a con. Uh, uh, we get conned when we pull 2 Chronicles 7, 14 out of that chapter. Yeah. Without reading the rest of it. Yeah. And take it as a whole thought. Right. Amen. Yeah. Good. Are you seeing this? Because yeah. listen. We have to understand that he's saying, Now my eyes shall be opened. Now my ears shall attend to the prayer that is made in this place. Amen. Now it wasn't just the 14th, the 14th verse that caused that. Right. It's verse 1 through 14 that caused verse 15 to happen. Right. Good. So it's all about sacrificing to God, loving God, putting God first. Come on, somebody. That's right. Yeah. Being willing to give whatever God wants to God. Amen. Because what if you're selfish, but you're praying for revival in the nation? Mm. Not going to happen. Mm. What if you're not even faithful in tithes and offerings, but you're praying for revival to come? First thing, you need to be revived. That's right. Because you're not revived. Okay. Amen? Amen. Right. Maybe you've never been vibed. That's why you're not revived. <laughs> Go to verse 16. <laughs> For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Now wait a minute. If you have the heart of God, the eyes of God, there. If you get His eyes, you get His face. Exactly right. And how do you say, how often would that happen? Perpetually. That means ongoing. For, to perpetuate means to ongoing. Continually. Now let me back up to the 12th verse just for a moment because I actually skipped something on purpose of what God calls His house. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer and I have chosen this place, the house of God, to myself for a house of... House of what? Sacrifice. There's two things God causes, calls, calls the gathering of His people. One, in, 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 in Matthew 21, He calls it a house of prayer. He said, you need to make my house a house of prayer. My house is to be called a house of prayer. Here he says, my house shall be a house of... If you'll do two things. If, if your gathering will involve prayer and sacrificial giving, you'll have a move of God. Hallelujah. Simple, isn't it? It's so simple, we miss it. And our flesh hates even hearing it. Yeah. 
Because our flesh, can I tell you what your flesh is? Your flesh is very stingy and very selfish. Yes. Yes. Woo! Yes. And what people want to do with, with people like me, because they don't they don't know my, my motive is for you to be blessed. Amen. That's it. But because some people may not have the same motive that I do, people, I've heard I've seen people accuse me of being in it for the money. You just want my money. When the Lord would say to me, No, they want their money. Right. They covet their own money. Right. So they would not give it to a preacher so it's easier to accuse the preacher of their own sin. Preach it. Of covetousness. Yeah. And it's actually true. If you find it out, they're, they're tight-fisted and it's all about them. Yeah. Extremely selfish. Mm -hmm. People who are always complaining about ministers and offerings have a problem themselves. Yeah. Ooh. That's true. Mm -hmm. I heard Creflo Dollar saying people have a really hard time with offerings. they got a poverty spirit. Oh, and the poverty spirit is speaking. Yeah. Well, we can cast that out, can't we? Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. And really the way you really cast it out is just get the revelation of the Word and accept it. Right. The Word will cast it out. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Fill up on the Word and there's no room for the other. There you go. Amen. What's your vessel full of? If it's full of understanding and revelation, you're there's some of you, you've got something churning on the inside of you while I'm teaching this. Mm -hmm. Others are like, hmm, 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 ah. <laughs> you don't think I don't know those things? I know quite well. But I can tell those that are givers. And see, I want to say this to you. Just because you give doesn't make you a giver. Right. That's right. A giver gives, but a giver lives to give. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. A real giver, it's who you are. Mm -hmm. It's part of your identity. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of your greatest yeah. ministries and one of your greatest joys. Amen. That's right. yeah. And God, oh, i got to tell you this. God calls you His treasure. Just go, go ahead and go to, to Malachi chapter 3. I want to show you. He not only calls you his treasure, but he says, I'm going to write a special book about you and put, your, put you in it and everything you say. I mean, wait till you see what I'm going to show you. How many would like the Lord to write a special book and write down everything you say? And see you as, a tre see you as his jewels, as his treasure. Anybody want that? Amen. Mm, I, do. Yeah, I do. And it's in the Word. So we're supposed to have it, right? Amen. Go to the very last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. And I want to show you now what happens. Hallelujah. Now he starts off with bring all the tithes in the storehouse. In fact, you go up before that, he says, Will a man rob me, but where have you robbed me? He said, In tithes and offerings. You know, you can't rob God, really, of money because He creates money. But what we really rob God of is an opportunity to create and multiply our resource back to us, and He really enjoys that. Amen. God's greatest pleasure is to bless you. And when you don't give, you rob Him of it. You take it away. Can you imagine if you were getting ready to give a gift to your child, someone else rushes in and says, I'm going to give all that, I'm going to take care of all that, and you don't get to do it. And therefore, your gift is never received because the gift you were going to give, the same one was already given. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. And you're sitting back going, man, that hurts. Yeah. Man, that hurts. You, you, you jumped in ahead of me and gave the same gift, so my gift means nothing now. Mm -hmm. you, you hurt me. Right. Why? Why were you hurt? Because you weren't able to have the pleasure of blessing somebody. How do you think God feels yes. when we don't give to Him and we're given to ourselves? Right. And he's going, you're robbing me. You're robbing me of the pleasure mm -hmm. to bless you the way I want to. Right. Yes. Right. yes. How many just got to revel? Yeah. Thank you for getting the revelation. Yes. <laughs> Listen, watch yes. what just happened to her. It, the revelation dawned on her. We, I want everyone here to go, that's it. So I want it, I want it to dawn on you. I want everybody to do what this dear sister did. That's it. That's it. In other words, I got it. It dropped into my spirit as light and revelation. Woo! Hallelujah. Now, let me show you what else begins to happen here that is quite amazing. 
Lord. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> verse 16 of Malachi 3, verse 16. And I want you to see this. Verse 16 of the same chapter. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and them that thought upon his name. Now, go to verse 17 immediately. Look at verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, my treasure. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serves him. And go to verse 18. You've got to catch 18. It's the same thought here. Then shall you return and discern. Woo, how many wants to be able to have perfect discernment between those that are serving God and those that are not? Those who claim to be Christians, but you know by the Spirit of God, but perfect discernment, they are not. You can say all the right, the right things, but have all the wrong attitudes and motives and have the wrong heart. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not God. And you know, because the context here is tithes and offerings, what do you think is going to be the main pivotal point here of discerning the righteous from the unrighteous? Those who give and those who don't. It's good. Come on. Tithers and givers serve God. Those who don't tithe or hit and miss on tithe and rarely give an offering are not serving God. They're serving self. Discern it. I said discern it. And look at your own heart and say, hmm, i got to change some stuff. i got to change some stuff. I, come on, you say, i got to change some stuff. Change some stuff. <laughs> because no matter, even if you're doing some of this, you can always improve. That's right. That's right. That's right. How many wants to have a Solomon anointing? I'm serious. Amen. Amen. So there's always more in there. That's right. There's always an increase. That's right. And you know, when I studied Solomon, this is an amazing, this is a side issue. You know, all the gifts of the Spirit operated in the Old Testament except for two. There's only two that's specific to the New Covenant that was not in the Old. There were actually seven of the, of the nine that operated quite frequently all the time under the Old Covenant. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of them. Can anyone guess which ones will, on, have, will only operate under the New Covenant that never did operate under the Old Tongues and interpretation of tongues. Wow. That's good. Oh, wow. Wow. Everything else actually operated. And you can see in different places where the gifts of healings, working of miracles, gift of faith, word of knowledge. It's all through the old covenant. Right? Mm -hmm. All the gifts were there. Through the prophets, right? Through the prophets. And, and even, even, the, even the, uh, the kings and the priests could operate in the gifts of the Spirit. The people couldn't because the Holy Spirit wasn't released yet to them. Right, yeah. right. But the prophets, priests, and the kings, three individuals, three different offices, could operate in seven of the nine we have today. That's good. And they did. Solomon, you want to talk about the wisdom that Solomon had? He actually had words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. And when the queen of Sheba, I'm thinking this maybe, is it 1 Kings 10? When the queen of Sheba came to Solomon... And the Bible said Solomon told her all the questions. Mm -hmm. That's what it said. Yeah. It didn't say he gave her all the answers. Right. It said he told her all her questions and all that was in her heart, she dis he disclosed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? Word of knowledge, words of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. He moved in revelatory gifts. So much so, she started to fall out in the spirit. Yeah. The Bible says she swooned. She staggered at the glory that was on him. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, glory to God. Amen. 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 Good. So Solomon, you got to understand what all Solomon operated in, but look how much the man gave. Yeah. How many has ever heard of Kim Clement? Anybody ever heard of Kim Clement? Yes. Now that man has detailed prophetic anointing. How many has ever watched him? He's had people healed of AIDS, all kind of stuff. Has he ever been in this area before? A long time ago? Anyway, he was. Okay. Now, I've, I've had him prophesy over our ministry twice. He's prophesied over me two, two different times. But one thing he said that I thought was unique. He said, I give 50% of everything that comes in my hand. God spoke to me. He said, God, I want you to use me 
in detail prophetic. I want signs, wonders, and miracles. I want glory beyond. And the Lord said, then give me, as God said to him, give me 50% of everything that comes in your hands and I'll do it. Mm. Wow. Some of y'all will catch this later, I'm sure. Good. That's good. <laughs> you can't buy anything from God, but if God requires it, you release it. Amen. Amen. Good. And obedience and lack of, get this, lack of selfishness right. yes. will open the door to the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I want to say this plainly. God will test you with money to see if He can trust you with His glory and His yes. anointing. Yeah. Will you pass the test? Right. Do you love God or you love man? Do you love God or you love yourself? Who do you love the most? Amen. It will be tested mm -hmm. by giving. Yeah. So it'll be tested by giving. It'll be tested by giving. How many wants to pass the test? Woo. You know, I determined I will. Amen. You say this with me, say, I will. I will. Pass the test. Pass the test. To come into the fullness. To come into the fullness. Of the glory of God. Of the glory of God. I will live a sacrificial life. I will live a sacrificial life. I will obey the Lord. I will, obey the Lord. I will praise Him sacrificially. I will praise Him sacrificially. I will give sacrificially. I will give sacrificially. I will live sacrificially. I will live and whatever He requires, whatever He requires, it's His. It's His. Now. The first sacrifice, I gave you one, I need to give you two more. The first sacrifice in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, living sacrifice. Here's the second sacrifice in Hebrews 13, 15. He's talking about the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of praise is not just praise. It's praising Him when it hurts. It's praising Him when you don't feel like praising Him. It's when you're going through your darkest hour and you praise Him. Come on. When it's hard. Yeah. to praise Him. Right. That you do it anyway. Yeah. And I found out that's when the greatest power is released, by the way. Mm -hmm. So God wants you as a sacrifice. He wants you praise even when it's hard. Yeah. Even when you're going through hell, you praise Him. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Now, somebody can sit here. Because I've gone through some stuff that I had. To, I, I praised Him anyway. Right. You think I felt like praising Him? No. It was hard to praise Him. That's right. Right. I was even trying to think what to praise Him for until right. He spoke to me. He said, Praise me for who I am! That's right. Glory to God. You can always praise Him for who you are. And then it broke that thing off of me and blessing began to flow. Glory to God. Here's the third sacrifice. That's Hebrews 13, 15. It should be up here. Hebrews 13, 15. Now here's the third one. Okay? Write him down quick. Try to stay up. Here's the third one. If you go over to Philippians 4 and verse 18. Philippians 4, 18. Woo, glory to God. But I have all and I bound. I am full, having received of Epiratitis the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Yeah. Now this is a listen. This is Philippians four eighteen. We always like to quote Philippians four nineteen. But you don't qualify for Philippians four nineteen till you fulfill Philippians four eighteen, because eighteen comes before nineteen. It's like trying to go to twelfth grade when you've never been to kindergarten. Amen. Never done kindergarten, first grade through 12, but you want to jump to 12. Say, ain't going to happen. That's right. It may not be good English, but it, it sure communicates. Amen. So you have to do this. Give sacrificially to God, right? Then move to verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When you begin to look at need right here, it means they sacrificed so much to Paul, they had a need. They gave themselves into a need. Boy, oh, some of y'all need to catch this. They gave so much to Paul, now they had need. Are you catching this? And when I go see a prophet, like with Kim Clement, we went to see him for three days. We gave all of our money and our rings, our wedding rings, because we had nothing else to give. And I, I, said, I said, Connie, we have nothing else to give. We've given all our money away. I was three or four, five hundred dollars, whatever we, we brought with us, plus our hotel. We had to pay for the hotel. We went to Detroit to see him. 
So we went up there, and I mean the, the I mean the prophet is speaking. How could I just bless? And I just did, man. I just I can't help it. I want to bless when God's moving, when God's speaking to a man of God. How can I keep back a penny? I'm, I'm, I guess some of you not like me. I'm not just, I'm just a wild man of God. I'm just wild for God. I'm extreme to the extreme. Extreme folks think I'm extreme. You'll catch that later. I said extreme folks think I'm extreme. But guess what? I do extreme things for God. Amen. I see extreme miracles. Amen. I see things that others never see. That's right. That's right. Till you're willing to be to do something others don't do, you'll never be able to receive things others don't receive. Right. That's it. That's it. That's good. That's good. You do the same old, same old everybody else does. You get the same old thing they're getting. Right. The person who wins the gold medal doesn't just do what everyone else does. The one who wins the gold medal has kicked it to another notch. I'm going for the gold. Amen. How about you? Amen. Say it. Amen. Say, I'm going for the gold. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go for all of it. Amen. Amen. But my God. And notice he didn't say your God. He said my God. Because I want you to see this. Paul had a particular relationship with God. He wanted them to receive on his level. Amen. That's good. When you sow into ministries, you tap into their level of grace. I'm about to show it to you in a moment. Go to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. I'm going to show you that Paul said, because you've been my partner, you're going to tap into my grace, the level where I'm at. How many wants to tap into the grace level that I'm in and the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God? To go? How many wants to tap into my level? You can't. You can't. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you because I have you in my heart. See? This is covenant connection. You love each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to be my covenant partner because I want I have you in my heart and I want to be in your heart. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a love thing. And we are connected. We love each other. We have the love of Jesus for one another. Mm -hmm. And we're partners and we're moving in this thing together. Yes. Right? I have you in my heart in so much that both in, in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, that's the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Confirmation of the gospel you are all partakers of whose grace? My grace. And when you look up grace, yeah, it's God's grace, but everybody doesn't have the same grace on them. Right. Right. I actually operated a grace above a lot of people. Right. That's not bragging. I positioned myself to get it. There you go. There's different levels of grace. All grace is not the same. <laughs> he said He giveth more grace. He said grace and peace can be multiplied. He said, grow in grace. So there's many, many passages about grace being on other levels and can be much stronger in some people's life than it is in other person's life. Grace is God's ability imparted to you to enable you to be who you should be, do what you should do, and have all the resource to do it. I'm going to have to say that again so you can catch it. Grace is God's ability imparted to man that enables you to be who you're called to be, do what you're called to do and have all the resource to do it. That is grace. Amen. Yeah. Woo. That's His grace. His grace is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And He's given it to who? To me. And you can get it from me. The level that I'm at, you can tap into and get it. Amen. Though you didn't have to, though you didn't have to go everything through everything I did to get what I got. You can take a shortcut. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. And Paul was saying, because you partnered with me and you sowed into my ministry and you blessed me and you sacrificed to help me, now you're going to be a partaker of my grace. Hallelujah. That's right. Now get that in your spirit. Woo. I'm yeah. down. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Because you know what? Because it got in your spirit. Amen. How many admit something got in your spirit today? Yes. What yes. was it? Say the word of God. The word, the word of God. God. The word of God got into your spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Did we have that even turned on? Yeah. It was? Yeah. Okay. 
I want to make sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that you can have a copy of it. Then we go back. Oh, how many of you, this something you're going to have to listen to again and again. Yeah. Now, I want to pray just one prayer over you right now. And then we're going to move into what God has for us. Father, right now, I pray that this revelation is sealed by your Spirit. Seal it by your Spirit in the hearts and minds of everyone here. That the devil will not be able to steal it, not be able to deter it, not be able to take it away. And that everyone here will soak it, will get it deep, and will hide your word in their heart so the enemy cannot, cannot sidetrack them or hinder them or hold them off from the full blessing of God. And that they will be so attractive to you that you won't be able to stay away from them. Right. You're going to be hugging and kissing on them and looking in their eyes and speaking promises over them and saying to them, ask whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, I just pray that your people come into the fullness of this. And we release it on you. In Jesus' name. Do you think I'm excited? I am. Hallelujah. Because I'm also a partaker of this. Excited? Anybody excited? Hallelujah! Now, now listen, now listen. You have an opportunity in this service to release a special seed. And remember what the Lord said. He spoke about a $300 seed over people that would cause a breakthrough to happen not only the rest of this year but all through 2015. And the Lord began to speak to me and, and began to talk to me about breaking the back of poverty and lack. Amen. It kind of rhymes, but that's how God speaks to me. Amen. He said, I'm going to break the back of poverty and lack off your life. But I must say something to you. The Lord spoke to me earlier, and the Lord had me give this very amount to Israel, and we're going to double that. Very soon, but the Lord spoke to that some of you are at the place where you're ready for a Solomon anointing. Somebody here is going to take the prophet's challenge and come into some stuff that Solomon came into. Someone's going to release a thousand dollar seed. It's not for everybody, so if it's not you, don't be offended. God may have you do the three hundred dollar seed. You do that. You do exactly what God says. That's where your blessing is. Yeah. But there will be somebody that the Holy Spirit's going to say, release a thousand dollar seed. If you release it, God said, I will cause the blessings of what we read tonight that was on Solomon's life to be upon you. You're going to begin to move in a wisdom beyond where you're at. You're going to begin to know things and speak things, and you'll be speaking over people, and they're going to be like ready to fall out in the Spirit. Amen because of the wisdom. You can't buy anything, but you can sure tap into it. Yes. Solomon tapped into it, didn't he? Yes. He didn't buy it. He tapped into it. You can't buy a thing from God. But you can sow a seed and reap anything from God. Yes. It's true. Yes. It's true. And the Lord has spoke to me of what He's about to do. Is it a little warm in here to some of you? Yes. 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 No. no, maybe it's just me. I, I feel an intense heat all over me. It's hot. I mean, my whole body is hot right it's now. Hot. Is it hot? Yes. It is hot. Okay, yes. let's drop it down a little bit. But I, but I, I get heated up by the anointing, so I have to make sure. I was seeing other people fanning each other, and so I thought, I don't know if maybe the anointing has come on them, which it might be. That might be too. When the anointing comes on me, I just break a sweat. I mean, I, I can be in the middle of wintertime, the anointing come on me, I'll just break a sweat. There's just sweat beating out all over me. And so I want you to hear the voice of God. And if you're making out a check. Please make it out to E Ministries, E M for short, E and an M for short, and get ready for the blessings of God to come. I believe that it's something special. Please see Ministries if you want to know how to spell it. But if you want to just abbreviate, just E M, and uh, release that seed to God, and we're going to begin to speak over you for God to fulfill something very special in your life. Something very special by that. I love the way she responds to the Holy Ghost. I really do. Please, please don't ever be embarrassed. I love that. Because see, you know what I see in her? She's responding to the Holy Spirit. And a response, she... I've seen other, I've seen other people that that tried on purpose to interrupt me, you know, but but she's just responded to the Holy Ghost. That never bothers me when people respond to God. Right. Said so that don't bother me. Right. 
when they're trying to interrupt me to interject something, that bothers me. But when they're, come, that's true. But when they're respond, when you respond to the Holy Ghost, that blesses me. I go, yeah, it's getting through, isn't it? Hallelujah. The Spirit of God's touching you. How many is preparing your heart to do what God wants? And if you want to give by credit card or debit card, you can see Ryan right at the back. He's right here at the back in the dark shirt. And uh, he'll help you. He is, he is my son-in-law. And, and also he, uh, he runs the offices. Him and his wife run our offices. So they're over the offices. And he's family and ministry. And an up-and-coming uh, apostolic ministry to the nations. That's his call. And he does minister in healing and miracles. So we may get him up here some today. We'll see how that works. But God ministers through him in that way as well. Something to share? Yeah, it was just uh, something to share. And Please. Based upon that, a question was just asked to me um, if you could vow it. That's what uh, I want to say. Yes, yes, you can. The Word of God speaks about vows. I don't have any added um, envelopes now. I passed those out. Did anyone grab those envelopes? We passed out several envelopes with our complete address on them. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get on our website, prophetphilrich.com, and uh, you can give that way as well. And uh, I was just going to share too, so that um, we were at one of your World Missions Conference, and there's a few different meetings. There's a morning meeting, there's a, an evening meeting, and uh, it goes on for about three days. So there's about six services or so, and so one of the one of the services, the Lord told me to give five hundred dollars, and so we did, and so when I put the the offering in the you know, they had a big, they got a, like a great big bucket, you know. Uh -huh. Put the offering in the bucket, I mean, just the fires and lightnings of God just shot through yeah. me. Just, shh. okay. And so, then the, the next service came, or the next day <laughs> came. And they figured that was the evening service, and it was like the next morning service. Um, and we came, went to the, the service again. And I, I, in my mind, I was in my natural mind, I was thinking, well, really don't have a whole lot more to give right now, so the Lord said, you know, I was like, I might, I might have a 20 or something, you know, put it in the plate and that. That was just my natural mind. And the offering time came again, and the Lord told me to give $500 again. And I said, Lord, I don't have $500. <laughs> he said, vow it. Vow it. Vow it. And so, when I made the vow this time, and I put the vow into the plate, into the, the big bowl, Again, the fires and lightnings of God shot through me again. And so, the uh, um, if God speaks to you to do it, He'll multiply it. Amen. He'll multiply it. And it's not just financial. It can, it can be financial. It can be, it can be all kinds of things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Spiritual. And there's so many things. I appreciate Pastor Dan sharing Amen. that. And, and to let you know, you know that, and, and, and we do believe that there's times God... I've been in a meeting, and I, 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 maybe I didn't have the whole vow that was spoken, but in my heart I knew God wanted me to do it. I would vow that and pay that out. And so I remember the first time I actually gave a $1,000 vow to the Lord. Uh, the Lord told me to give $1,000. I don't have $1,000. He said, I'm not asking you whether you had it. I'm, I'm telling you to do it. I said, how do I do it? He said, believe for it. I'll give it to you, and as I give it to you, you send it. And we sent it until that $1,000 vow was completed at the end of that Signs, wonders, and miracles begin to operate in our ministry Amen. that never had before. Amen. In fact, that was the dental miracles and the, and the yeah. tumors and growths disappearing and all of that. Amen. That happened after obedience to a thousand dollar vow. Amen. Can you buy anything from God? No. no. But you can sure sow a seed and reap anything from God. That's right. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Anything you need, you can reap that. Oh, I'm, I'm, whoo, as soon as you get your seed ready. Oh, I'm feeling the presence of God. And, though, and, and some just couldn't wait. They've already planted that seed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> some have already planted it. You know what that means? They believe the prophet. That's it. They believe it. Come on up. Because the power of God's on people and they can't wait. When the, when the power of God comes, you, you just don't want to wait. You're just excited about your seed and excited about the miracles. <laughs> and the glory and do it with faith and know that God's releasing everything He just said in His Word. That's why I love to give you Scripture. Do you know why I love to give you Scripture? Because the Scripture... Oh, the glory's on you, isn't it? Boy, the glory's all over you. See, the Scripture will show you. There it is. There it is. I received that. 
I receive that. Oh, the glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God, oh, the presence of God. Whoo! Would everyone who released it who wanted to, some of you are giving by uh, the debit card or credit card, that's great. We're going to release the blessing on everyone who's sown the seed any way that God tells you to sow it. And we're going to believe God for miracles for you. Turn around for you. Signs and wonders for you. How many believe there's a new day coming? Amen. Yes, there is. There's a brand new day coming for people. And I'm excited. I said, I'm excited. Thank you, Lord. We complete. Did everyone give who wanted to? Yes. Oh, yes. If, if you want to put this in as well, those little cards... For the email uh, newsletters, if you filled out your email newsletter, thank you. God bless you. If you did your email newsletters, God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. So the Lord knows what you're doing, and He blesses you accordingly. Amen. 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 I tell you, the Holy Spirit's still moving. Things are still happening. If anyone else want to put their card in, for email newsletters, if you've not had a chance to do that, I'll mention that again. If you have a card for the email newsletters, you've not had a chance to turn them back in, please fill that out and turn that in. Uh, if the Lord's been speaking to you about partnering with us, we've had a few people do it. Uh, just meet with me at the back and we can set that up together. I'm out of the envelopes for it. so. If you don't mind coming after the service or if you get a time when you're not being ministered to, just find me if I'm not being ministered to and, and we'll get it to you. Yes, yes. And you think about it, an ongoing partnership also releases an ongoing flow. Amen. And it also, it's a connection. It's like a covenant connection. So as the Spirit of the Lord speaks to you about a partnership, feel free to do that as well. Partner with us. I do pray for my partners. You're extremely important to me. Every one of you, even in your offerings you've given this time, but also those who will, on a regular basis, when I'm not here, you're still praying for me, you're still releasing a seed. How many is going to come into a covenant of prayer with me? I want to share with you something I learned, and I call this a 30 to 60 second prayer. The Holy Spirit does something unusual for us that we may not even know He's actually doing. There's times when I will just see your face. I'll be driving down the road, and here, I, just for a second, I just see a flash of your face. And it's a nice memory, and I'm going, oh, yes, they're from Kansas City. Oh, that's wonderful, and I'm thinking about you. But what God was trying to do is have me pray for you. Amen. What I need to do is pray a 30-second prayer of blessing, breaking the power of darkness off of you, breaking any demonic attack off your life, praying for your finances, praying for your health, praying for your family, praying for your destiny. And it only takes 30 seconds to do that. Did you know that? <coughs> 60 seconds max. I want to come into a covenant with you that when I see your face, I'm going to do a quick 30-second prayer. How many is going to do that for me? Will you come into covenant with me? Let's do a, let's do a 30. Let, let's just call it 30 because it may go into 60, but usually it's just 30 seconds. It doesn't take long. You know, Lord bless Brother Phil, touch his family, we, we rebuke the devil, the attacks of the enemy, we break that off his life, his finances are blessed, his family is blessed, his ministry is blessed, Lord bless him today in Jesus' name. Yeah. That probably took less than 30 seconds, but you have no idea what kind of power will be released in my behalf. Right. And in yours, when I see your face, right. I will pray for you as well. Amen. So Father, as we come into covenant, even with prayer, Lord, I pray a supernatural blessing that you will cause us to see each other's faces and pray blessing over one another, even for 30 seconds. Even less if it only takes 15, we're going to do it. We're going to speak blessing. We're going to break attacks of the enemy. And we're going to speak the anointing and financial increase and blessing for the family and health and healing for each other. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Stretch out your hand over this seed. Father... These are people who love you so much and they love the anointing and they love our ministry and they love the teaching and the revelation of the Word. Father, they have honored you by honoring us. And I pray, God, that you will honor them as they have honored you according to your Word. 
that you will prosper them beyond measure. Bless them spiritually. Bless them financially. May the same grace that I operate in come upon them. May the same anointing of revelation of the Word and the anointing to hear your voice and to see your face and experience you in intimacy. May they come into the fullness of it. May some Lord who gave the thousand dollar seed receive the same type of anointing that was even